Hello viewers, I'm Alan from VVV Gamer and I uh, thought I'd catch up with a bit more Need for Speed news this week. Uh, last week I was lucky enough to be invited out to a live Need for Speed event where we had real cop cars or real sort of Lamborghinis done up as cop cars and I took a spin with uh, Ben Collins who previously used to be the Stig on Top Gear. So of course uh, looking at the date events, first you'll see Roll Deep here just uh, rolling up uh, along with Ben making his uh, welcome as well. Ben certainly stood out when he made his appearance. After that it was into the uh, main tent for a few games on Need for Speed which was set up on around uh, 16 different demo pods within the venue. I'm not lying, I'm seven seconds ahead you. know how long that is in miles an hour speed. Big, big crash here, long cross two, big crash. Competitive game for everyone at the venue there. But of course, myself, I was the first one out in the car and taking a spin around the Cobham uh, Long Cross Circuit. Fantastic circuit, really challenging, lots of different types of, sort of tarmacs and bumps and all the rest of it. Not like your classic race course, but of course, there had been some rainfall, and you'll notice there's a lot of trees, so it's a very greasy circuit. But here's a couple of clips now of uh, my onboard camera footage of uh, my ride with Ben Collins. good fun but you don't really get the feeling of speed from a video I find I've done a few videos from racing cars but anyway just to finish off here's a quick bit now uh, coming to uh, end my run as we do a little uh, handbrake slide uh, as I finish my run for the day oh, I love it the wind is awesome oh I'm so glad we're in a convertible Word. That was awesome fun, um, more than one word actually. Uh, but the next up for me was obviously playing a bit of the game for the day and you'll see that all on my feature uh, on the VV Gamer site. But my next was to interview the European Vice President, uh, Patrick Soderland, and to talk to him a little bit about uh, Need for Speed, where it's been, where it's going, a bit about Team Need for Speed, and some of the changes that were made for Need for Speed Shift. Uh, it possibly gives an idea of what we're going to see in the future. Chico, I want to find out about your initial inspiration in motor racing in general. Where did your passions come from? Well, I've been totally addicted to cars since I was probably three or four years old. You know, I've, you know, I had, yeah, that's been a, a huge passion of mine. And, and I came to a point in my life where I could also, fortunately, afford to, um, to um, buy some of the nicer cars. And, and so I've obviously owned a bunch of nice cars and I've driven them quite, quite hard. And then... Um, I did other sports at a relatively high level and, and when I was about 20, 29 years old I decided that no, now I can afford and I really want to try this motorsport thing and then got hooked. Now did you, uh, obviously Need for Speed Shift last year had the drifting uh, heavily in it as well. well, tell me a bit about your Need for Speed, sorry your team Need for Speed driving and what's that been all about? Well team Need for Speed as an idea is basically we, we, we um, when we wanted to broaden the Need for Speed brand and go after the authentic kind of motorsport segment of, of, of games um, with Shift, uh, we did that with success. You know, the game was good and, and a lot of people liked it and a lot of people bought it, which is ultimately how you measure success, right? Um, we then said, okay, we want to stay, stay in this. We think that we can be a real player in the authentic motorsport segment you know, of, of games. And, and we've, I felt like to have a team of drivers that could be representing Need for Speed brand, but also that could be an integral and, and an, impor an important part in developing the products, because that's ultimately how I look at it. All the team Need for Speed drivers are involved in making the games, you know, the, the, the shift brand that we're working on, uh, better, and you know, to make the cars handle right. One of the things that we didn't do particularly well in shift, one was the drifting. It was very hard to drift a car, and I'm the first one to, to recognize that. And we knew that when we shipped it, we just couldn't get it right. So one of the things that, you know, going forward for future versions of, of our products, we've obviously looked at 
at um, you know drifting as, as in a big improvement for how do we how do we get this right? But also other types of motorsport, you know, where do we want to reach to? Why is that important? But Team Need for Speed as an idea is there to establish us as a true player in the in the motorsport segment. Obviously, get feedback from real world people that are doing this every day into the product because ultimately that's that's what it's about. We want to be able to give the consumer the best possible experience of what it's like being behind a race car doing what, what you're doing in a race car. Yeah, well that's something we're going to look at uh, in the future as well, Team Need for Speed, because obviously we have a lot of keen drivers looking at the site. But the, one question I do have is about Need for Speed Shift. Now, yeah. when I played at the early version last April, we played the Tokyo track, Yeah. and I thought the handling was phenomenal. Now, breaking into the tunnel, you go into the tunnel in about second gear. Uh, a lot of people were crashing to the left hand side. Yeah, yeah. In the final game, however, you could take that in fifth gear, and the handling had been rewritten. Now, I, I will ask you a bit about the, the idea. It, it, you know, no one's really, I've never got an interview since Need for Speed Shift came out to really ask what, where it changed. I didn't like it as a driving purist, right. but tell me your, your, your impression. No, and, and what you're saying is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, all the research told us that it probably was a little bit too hardcore mm -hmm. and it would appeal to the racing purists, like myself and mm -hmm. you, probably, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, though, we are a mass market brand. We needed to reach out to a wider audience. So what? But what, what? So that doesn't mean let's let's skip all the motor purists. Yeah. What we need to do is, which is exactly what we're going to do in the future, is let's do make a game that fit both, so that you can decide what you want. Mm -hmm. If you're a racing purist, if that's what you're after, Need for Speed the shift series should be for you because you can just put it to that level, mm -hmm. and then it's going to be like that. If you if you prefer kind of an easy way of driving. And, and you're not as familiar with how, how it is to race a car, then go to easy mode, and then that's the way you play it. Uh, we didn't have enough time to provide a good experience for both those areas. Mm -hmm. I still think that shift is, is relatively good, but, but I, I agree with you mm -hmm. that it's, it's actually not... I mean, I, I say shift to me is not a simulation, yeah. it's more, it's an, it's an authentic motorsport experience. experience. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the difference, right? Yeah. And I'm not sure that shift should be about pure simulation, because I, I think it tends to be Relatively boring, yeah. you know. I, 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 you know, when I play as much as I love Gran Turismo, yeah. but when I buy buy the game, I play it. And the first thing I have to do, I can only afford a Toyota Yaris. Yeah. In my first two and a half hours, I'm going to be in a Toyota Yaris. I'm not, in, I'm not interested in that. It, it's completely a waste of my time, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. And, and so, you know, there's pros and cons, and you yeah. just have to pick your way. I, I, what I really want to do is to be able to convey what it feels like driving a race car, yeah. what it feels like crashing a race car. Because I know my neck is really sore from a big crash I had in Zolder. I mean, a big, big crash. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's going to get well. But, but I mean, I really know what it feels like to crash crash hard. And, and if we can convey that to the consumer in a, in, a, in a cool way, then I think we'll win. Okay, well, final question then, just about the current need for speed. Yeah. Um, you moved away from the whole in-car experience now, changed the structure of it. Uh, is it is this going to be a, a constant split we're going to see now? Is the, you've got the racing shift, and then you're going to have cop chasing action. Or where does Need for Speed go? From yeah, yeah. I, I think it's relatively simple. The way I look at it is, you have two branches of Need for Speed. You have the action adventure type of oriented product, and um, that this is the, the, the Hot Pursuit. This is Criterion's take on Hot Pursuit or Need for Speed, which will give the which will give the consumer a slightly different maybe experience than. A black box, which is the original kind of developer Need for Speed, what their version of Need for Speed would do. I find that to be inspiring. I find that to be a good thing because who wants to eat the same food every day, right? If you, if I can give you something this November that is is the following, that's Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, a brilliant arcade kind of cops racers game with a cool social network added to it, and if I maybe next year I can give you something that reminds me of this but is a different experience, I think that's interesting to me, and then. On the other side, I think we'll stay more true to what, what the shift segment is, and we'll come back with, with iterations of shift going forward. So I think that's the way I look, I look at it as two, as two kind of main roads. Mm -hmm. One is the action and one is the authentic one. Well, Patrick, thank you very much for thank your you. time. Thank you. Interesting and somewhat insightful uh, conversation there with Patrick. We look forward to the future of Need for Speed, Unleash 2, that is, for next year, though that's not official yet. And we'll keep our ears uh, to the ground for more news. But in the meantime, uh, we'll be running more Need for Speed coverage in the next couple of weeks. And I look forward to having your feedback as well.